This is the time where I talk about the faithful stewards. And these are not some special kind of people. These are not uh, people that are born in a particular continent. These are not people that are of a certain age. No. No. These are people we find in the Bible. These are people we, we, we read about a hundred years ago. And these are people that are still here even in this generation. And in the coming generation they will still be there. They are simply people to just people that are just normal people that have come to the realization that whatever they have, they do not own. But they possess those things for God's glory. They have them, but they don't own them. It is very important to come to that point of understanding. And we see these kinds of people in the book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 32. He says, the multitude of those who believed, they were of one heart and of one soul. And neither did anyone say, that any of the things he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. This was the mentality that helped the church in the early stages to grow so much. They all knew they did not own the things they possessed. And that's why in the same verses around that very verse, that's when they tell you how they gave lands, how they gave their houses, and they even sold some, and they brought things at the apostles' feet. That's what he says in verse 34. That neither was there any among them that lacked. Do you know why we have people in the church but when they are living in lack? It is because they are those who are holding on to what they should not hold on to. That is how it happens. We shouldn't have a church where one brother has five million dollars on the account and the other brother has not eaten for five days and he's not fasting. But we are in the same environment. That is not what, is, what, what church is supposed to be. And the Bible tells us neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses, they sold them. And they brought the prices of the things that were sold. And they let them at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. So everybody knew I'm just a steward of what I have. I possess it but I don't own it. It belongs to God and belongs to the body of Christ. We are raising such people. We are raising faithful stewards. We are raising faithful stewards. People that will have that mentality. It all begins with the mentality. It all begins with the mentality. That when, when I possess that projector, I do not, I cannot even 
how you read to the church. Now, now like that projector, projector we did java. buy it with church money. My wife and I bought it as our own property. But if we thought we own it, we would have now told the church, though we are pastors, we are going to make sure the church hires from us. And, and that happens a lot in church. And sometimes it is understandable. Because a brother has a business and uh, probably he hires out machines and then the church has a crusade but after the machines are used they have to be serviced so he can say please help me with the money for servicing them that is understandable. But when the brother says, I know it is our church, but this is the red card. And we can't change. He doesn't yet understand why God gave him that equipment. He feels the ownership not the stewardship. When you know you are just a steward, you know that whatever God has placed in your hand is for you to manage well so that I, I, I give glory to God with it and out of it. And that is the kind of people we are raising people that will know that their jobs are not just for them. When God increases your salary, it is not just for you. When God gives you a big opportunity, he's giving it to you as a steward of the kingdom. Because this is how God set the system. That in order for his kingdom to thrive, he has to bless the citizens of the kingdom so that there will be a blessing to the kingdom. So when God wants us to buy land for the church, it does not rain down from heaven like manna. He's not going to do that. What is going to do when we pray that Lord bring money for, for us to buy church land? He's going to bless a certain sister with a certain amount of money. And he's going to bless a certain brother with a certain amount of money. And he will, in his mind, in God's mind, those people will use some of that money but as faithful stewards of the one that gave them the money they are going to make sure they take care of his business first so he knows that they will give the tithe and it will help in the service of the church and he knows they will give their offerings for the operations of the church and he knows they will sow those special seeds so that his kingdom can expand. So if they take ownership of the money, they will not give though they are supposed to give. And then the kingdom will not move and the spirit is supposed to move. But we all have to understand that we are just stewards of what God has given us. And we need to use them to serve the Lord. Three C's, three things that we see from Nehemiah that he had that made him a good steward. Number one, Nehemiah had concern for Jerusalem. He had that concern. And if you are going to be a faithful steward, you must have 
concern for the kingdom. You must have concern for the kingdom. When the when they told him about the ruins of Jerusalem, he felt bad. But are you concerned? Are you concerned about the fact that homosexuals are taking over in schools? Are you concerned that false prophets are taking over where churches should have been? Are you concerned that people are dying on a daily basis? Yet they don't have Christ. You must have concern. The second thing is he had conviction. He had conviction that he had to do something about it. Because some of us have the concern, but we don't have the conviction to do anything about it. But what some of us have the Whenever you read the newspapers, you're like, oh God. People are getting, children are getting pregnant in school. It's too bad. It is concerning. But without conviction to do anything about it. Nehemiah had the concern and the conviction. You must have that conviction. God has just reminded me of that story. I've told it before. I think it was 2007. 2007. I was in my third year at campus. And I was in my hostel room. Watching TV. And then I flipped to the news. And there was a place in Mayuge where uh, uh, these genies, I'm a genie, regarding Kubabana. The genies. I don't know, Charuzung, we're taunting and torturing the children. The demons were disturbed. They were covering a story. And these news reporters went and covered the story. As I was watching the news. What brought much concern to me? And they were pleading for Mama Fina to come and help. They had paid some witch doctor na, na to come to kwa, ta, mama fina But the witch doctor failed, so they were pleading to Mama Fina. And I felt bad as I was It was watching. a point of concern for me. And I was wondering, are there no local in Mayuge? Why should it be Mama Fina? But then I got the conviction also that I must do something about this. I called my brother Sami. Some of you know him. And I told him tomorrow we are going to Mayuge. I was watching the news I think on Friday evening. Early evening. Going for overnight after that. Overnight. So I told him after overnight we are going to Mayuge. I asked to do what? I said we are going to minister. Okay. And he said okay. We went to overnight. overnight. After the overnight we went to the tax park. And asked do you know where we are going? I said, I just know it is Mayuge. I have never read there, but I know it's called Mayuge. And I told him, these conductors and Boda Boda people so to know things. We are going to go up to Jinja. And we shall ask 
Do you know in Mayuge where demons possess people? That's where we want to go. Wakola. And that's what we did. It was a whole day journey after an overnight. And the taxis were not So, good. And we went up to where we got border borders. We reached at around 5 p.m. Of course, it's not because it's very long uh, distance, but in Tambula, Vichibichinae, but what we was so good and a motokaya one day, Campari Genda Sawa make a commission if you do so. Okubite matema na ibu ndo zangu tuze koko tuza tuza kuvudi tuja njia kubalancing ni mepi yamu vuno zivu anga mukubite koma honga let me save some time let me save some time so in short we eventually reached the place over border natu sana gama nzi mani yo there is a chairman we first reached natu gamba ne muagala chimuli ba na mauli de chairman yari namusira. Tuabuzwa <laughs> When he said that, we were like, what? It's like, we're excited. And he looked at us like, we're abnormal. So, we thought to us, we were like, we were So, the man looked at us and like, who are you? Are you journalists? We said, no, we are not journalists. We are not journalists. We are, we are just uh, ministers of God. He said, okay. We went to the village. We found the Mrs. Chairman. We asked her, is this the village? Blah, blah, blah. She said, yes. But the chairman is not around. I'm the one around. We told her, okay. Round up the entire village. Tell them we are here to do what you people wanted Mama Fina to do. She has no power. We came with the power of Christ to make sure that your village is redeemed. People began to gather in the center. I remember they were around 1.30 or something. One guy came with a bicycle and he said, Me, I know where those children are. He went and picked one. No, 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 no. To cut the long story short, we prayed for the village, preached the gospel to them, and then as we were finishing uh, from praying for the sick, and, and, and they, were, they were putting up their hands as how they have been healed and all that. The one guy said, Musumba! Musumba! The problem of this village is from the well. Musumba! <laughs> we marched with the entire village to, to, to the well. We told them, don't trust in witchcraft again. And if there is any witch among you here, bring him here. And all of a sudden, no witch was showing up. Praise the Lord. Why am I telling you this story? Being concerned is not enough. You must have the conviction to do something about it. And then you must also have the confidence that when you do what you have to do, it will cause some change. Nehemiah had the three. He had the concern for Jerusalem, the conviction that he had to do something about it, and the confidence that if he did what he had to do, things would change. Children of God, we must have those three. That pushes us to be faithful stewards of the lives and the resources God has given us. In conclusion, God has blessed us with a vision as this ministry. He has blessed us with human resource.
people love to serve the Lord. We don't have a deficit of vision whatsoever. But right now, we need people that God has blessed with resources to make sure that they stand with us to further the vision that God has given us. Some of you have faithfully done it. Please clap for your city of Z. Amen. Some of you have made pledges, one pledge after the other. You bring in your first fruits. You, you give your tithes and offerings faithfully. You, you sow seeds. I keep telling this story because some of you are always new here and there's somebody new here. But when we began the project to purchase this land, we are not renting here. This is our land. Hallelujah. And it is just as small as that cloud that was as small as a man's hand. Praise the Lord. Don't even get used to this church being like this. Gamba konti amina. Wano just actually when I kuba plan in Motwegwang and Alabanga. Wano when you meet do and side yeah and gonna kuba out toy. Gamba neighbor neighbor. So I'm to move jawa to in a because we are just starting, praise the Lord. We are not just starting ministry, but we are just starting on establishing our home. We, 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 we built a church before we even built ours. Twazimbira abe we ende kanise singa nene obunene. Nenga fetuna zimba ya fe. Tuzimbira na mwandu enyumba fetuna zimba wa fe. Netubulire njirie ya basumba ni bafu we mukisa. Those are the things we've been working on for all those years. So this place is new, not because we are starting ministry, as you have seen in the video, but because we first took care of others before we came to us. Praise the Lord. But God is going to expand this place. But before we, 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 we got here, we raised money. And I told people we are raising 100 million. And by that time, I was tired of raising money. And if you get a gamba, the Kanumkama Yampa de Kangika could ya pizza. I'm not giving it to you, it's my money. Hey. I was tired of mobilizing funds, but God was pushing me to do it. Just last year, beginning of last year, we said we are raising 100 million. We're buying land. And we tried to first start with Mukono, but God pushed us where we are supposed to be. We are supposed to be here. Praise the Lord. We shall have a branch in Mokono. Not many years from now. Or not many months from now. Hallelujah. But it will depend on the response of the faithfulness of the stewards. But what encouraged me? The first person said, we are going to give 160,000. And I said, oh, hallelujah. 100 million Minus 160,000. Praise the Lord, we have begun. Hallelujah. But the second person, say the second person, called my wife and I, sat us down and told us, I want to tell you something. God has put this upon my heart to give all this money that I have. Like, are you sure? Like, how much is it? And this person said, 17.7 million shillings. Ah, you have clapped. Me, I didn't clap. Me, I said, I sure. Because these things were people getting excited, and afterwards they blame God for smanya stealing from them. I like, are you sure God told you? Because I'd seen people give 5 million, 3 million. I never had 17. 17 from one person who does not have another 20 or another 5. But they are saying God told me to give all. It was an accumulation of their uh, kind of gratuity over the years. So it was a representation of their sweat for years. And they are not leaving anything behind. And you know how you come to that level? When you have come to the realization that whatever you have belongs to the Lord. So in other words, he can do with it whatever he wants. One day he can come and he says, I want 30% of that. Another day he can come and say, I want all of it. 
Another day he can say, buy off a plot of land and give me the rest. So he can say anything about what he has given you, but your response will be determined by how much you know that it all belongs to him. Hallelujah. That pushed me. And I said, it is indeed God who told us to raise this money. Hallelujah. And finally we are here because faithful stewards gave. So eventually, God has done what we, we see today. And if you look at that parking lot and here, all that is our space. Just the money we spent in that place. Oh my God. God is a provider. God is a provider. But he has to use people. He has to use people. And I want you to allow to be used of God. To stand with us in this vision. Some of us were, were just invited here for this particular message for the faithful stewards. You don't even pray from here. You are not going to leave your church. But you can see a vision where you need to invest your money and you say, I need to support this. There are people that have supported us and have never seen them. But they keep sending money because they believe in the vision and in what we do. And that is all you need. So this is what is going on. And this is what I would like you to do. I'm not going to beat about the bush and tell you so many stories because here we don't do that. We tell you what it is, and you know that is what it is, and you know what you've got to do about it. Praise the Lord. God has blessed us with a great vision. This vision can accommodate everybody. Ultimately, we have a very, very big vision that I cannot share with you right now. We have so many churches we have to plant. At least a thousand. We have as long as Jesus tarries. No, that's the vision we have. We have schools to construct. We we have hospitals to construct. We we that, that's the broad vision, not for now now. But if God brought the resources now, we would start on it now. Hallelujah. But right now where we are, we need to expand. I'll tell you about four things that are for now. We need to expand. Because God needs a place to do big things among so many people. So, this was just to launch us here. But we are praying for our neighbors. to desire other pieces of land elsewhere, that the Lord will grant them their heart's desires as he grants our heart's desire. Isn't that very positive? You cannot get any positive than that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, that is number one. We got to expand. And that is some hundreds of millions, but we shall do it in phases. That is number one. And we have to work on it. I thought that by the end of this year, we would have expanded by another space of worth 100 million. We haven't done that because the needs have been many. Some of you don't know what goes on in the ministry. If you can just give me those figures. Uh, I want to give people an example of just this week, the things we've spent on the fresher capture, the chairs, and vis-a-vis -vis the offerings and the tithes they gave last Sunday. <laughs> so, the needs are always many. Very many. So, that hinders what we would have wanted to do in a great way. All the chairs we have here, they are ours. Praise the Lord. And some of you, you just think the church is the way it was the last time you came. No. We just added another 25 chairs yesterday evening. And that was 640,000 just on that. So we have had to do this. We have had to expand, uh, to, I mean, to, to buy some equipment. 
like I told you, the good news is we are starting uh, our service in Chambogo, in Banda, next Sunday. Hallelujah. And every time we say that, people clap their hands. Do you know what it means on this side? A budget. We just bought a speaker for them. Uh, just one speaker. It is even right there in front of that keyboard down there. That alone is 750,000. Small, small things, but the way money just... And the mixer we are using now, Mwaba Church, Yamwe, Sige Tokozesa, Yachambo Geyo, Yegende Kola next Sunday. It is just two weeks old. I think two weeks. Some things we never tell you, but we are working. And every time you are working for ministry, it is money. So, kati, ogeno kula banga, wetu wanduweze zobu kade chikumi, otode ko kamunga, gagure vyo mevi, wana vyo yetagisa. So, that's how we keep moving. You have the bigger vision, but then you still have these things that demand every day. And then the people in Chambu go need their keyboard. The one we just bought for the church is 2.4 million, and we can't buy any less than that. So we need one for Chambogo, 2.4 million. One for KRU, 2.4 million. We need to buy them microphones. Just two pairs. Uh, each campus is like half a million. So just microphones. So this is how we, we, we just look at money serving the Lord. So that's where we always are. But we need to expand. And I want you to give knowing that we need hundreds of million to expand. Secondly, we do missions, as you have seen, and school ministry. And uh, this time we have been able to go to some schools, and we are trying to establish a system whereby we don't just go to a school once, but we establish a relationship with that school that is ongoing, whereby we can impact those students. And if you are concerned about what the devil is doing in schools, you will have the conviction to do something about it. Do you remember the time when Shiba's story took center stage in the news? Some of you never knew those things are happening in school. But if the church is not there, the devil is going to take over. Now for us, we are willing to go. But we need resources from other brethren to help us. That's the second thing. You need to help support the missions and the schools with your resources. And this December, we are going for mission. Hallelujah. As our custom is, every December, every Christmas time, for so many years now, I think from uh, 2016, every Christmas period, we are not, we are in the village, but not in the village. For us, every Christmas time, we are out preaching the gospel, doing the very thing for which Jesus was born. That is our motivation. We cannot do everything, but we can do something. And I told God, if we have 100, how many districts now? Those of you that are more well-versed than me, 146. We now have 146 districts. I told God, if I can cover one every Christmas, at least get another 145 mission teams to cover the rest. And if they are not available, multiply us in such a big way that I will be able to do a 146 in one mission all over Uganda. Some of you are looking at movies. This was a film with the same pandi. Katene tuzi zanya gamba konti amina. The time we had a four in one mission, the other one was a real movie. We had four districts in two weeks, and we were spending a week in each district. Kachabali chivalu chigani. Four districts in two weeks, and we spent a week in each of those districts. Ngazo natu kola crusade, door to door school ministry. It was the beginning of 2013. We were in Sironko, Lugazi, 
manafwa and Wusia. So we divided ourselves into two. One mission team was in Sronko, as another one was in Lugazi. Then the one for Lugazi in the second week went to Manafwa, and the one of Sronko in the second week went to Busia. And me, I went to all the four. Hallelujah. I made sure I preached in each of those districts. And we're coordinating things on a daily basis. So if God can give us the opportunity to spread ourselves into 145 districts, 146 districts, why not? But at least for now, we can cover a district and make sure that we have probably two pulpits in the same district in the different places. So this is what we're going to do even this Christmas. And can I tell you where we're going? Many people want to know where is the next mission. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to Kamuli District. Hallelujah. The special project this time is we are going to embark on something that God has placed upon my heart for a while, but we had never implemented it in a big way. And this one is not going to be a one-time thing. Because when we constructed a Damali, a house, that was just a one-time thing. Of course, we, 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 we got some sponsorship for her, for her from some friend of mine that I've never met physically. She's a Ghanaian woman in West Virginia in America. We just met online. <laughs> but she supported the mission and kept sending us some kamani for some time. But that was more of one time. And then we built this church in Buyende for those brethren of Yeswa Kwagala Church. And uh, we didn't support them much more beyond that. But I'm glad they're taking on the work. So we thank God for that. But their church is now respected. Hallelujah. But the one we are going to do now is about sponsoring students with their education. So it is a special project we are going to start and pray for me. I'm also still praying for me that God gives us the wisdom to execute it very well because it's going to be for a while and we don't want to just pay for them. We want to make sure that we raise them for Christ as much as we can. Hallelujah. By, by changing their mindset so that they grow up as transformers for God's glory that will become faithful stewards that will help others who are like them. So it's a long-term thing. It's more of a project starting, and God has to give us the wisdom to do it. So missions and schools, that is category number two. Land expansion was number one. And number three is about buying equipment. Because now we are talking about funding missions, but that is now just uh, hiring staff. We can only do it once in a while. When we were getting this place, things were happening so fast, and we needed some help. We knew people were going to give, but the money was trickling in, and the system was not going to wait for us. So we got some calculated loans that we can pay over a long period of time, or we can finish and proceed, proceed to the next thing quickly. So we still have to pay something like 30 million at the moment to just clear with that. And if we are to engage into another loan, it can be another calculated loan to make sure that we expand before the land appreciates more in value on the side of our buyers, I mean, that our sellers. So, and today, I want you to do something about it. But even before we get to that level, this is what I want to encourage you with. 
make sure that you do your part in the kingdom on a weekly basis. I want us to be responsible citizens in the kingdom of God because we cannot talk about the level of sacrifice and sowing seeds before establishing the level of tithes and offerings. So let's start with that. Make sure you are a faithful tither. Make sure you give your offerings on a regular basis. This week alone, we have spent close to 1.1 million. But the income was 169,000. So the question is, how do you manage? Yeah, but there are other people who gave, who fulfilled their pledges. It was 250,000. But you see, if people were not pledging, and we only had the tithes and offerings of 160,000, what would happen? How would we do all the big things we are talking about? So we always need people to come in. And right now, I want to give you an opportunity to join us in this work. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an opportunity to sow in the work of the Lord. And do you know what I'm believing for next year? Is that people are going to make great pledges unto the Lord. How many of you made annual pledges this year? God has granted us favor in people's sight. Hallelujah. And others have made monthly pledges. Others have made pledges towards the missions. But next year, beginning next, um, next joint service of December, we are going to make our pledges. And by the way, that December joint service, it is on 4th of December, is going to be our last joint service of 2022. That one anybody can tell. But it's also going to be a Thanksgiving service. Hallelujah. So it is going to be full of testimonies. Some of you might be in papers during that time. Yes. Fourth so, December is going to be our last joint service in 2022 and is going to be a thanksgiving service. But on that Sunday, I want as many of us to come with our annual pledges for 2023. Me, I, I already have a figure that I believe as a family we are going to pledge to the Lord as our annual pledge. Above, above our tithes and offerings. But I will confirm it between now and then. If it is to change, it can only increase. It cannot go down. Praise the Lord. Now Some of you pledged a million shillings and above this year. And God has granted you the grace to keep fulfilling. Go a notch higher next year. Gamba konti amina. I pray that we can get pledges worth 500 million for 2023. We can be able to do a lot that year if we can have half a billion shillings in our hands. And it's very possible. You know what that means? It means 100 people pledging 5 million. Whatever amount. Whatever amount. Watch the way I may have a million for a year. Because that's 500,000 divided by 12. What do you get? What a 1,600. What do you get? business, that would be too low for you. But I want you to pray about it. And on 4th December, we shall begin collecting pledges for 2023 in Jesus' name. And those of you that are willing to make monthly commitments uh, as your annual pledge, because some say, my annual pledge, but it's not defined when the money will come. I can give as the Lord provides. But others say, my annual pledge is 4 million, but every month I'll be giving this particular amount. And that is a lot better, because you help us plan better. So, I want you to come prepared. Be with us on 4th December. Come with an amount with which you can support CTM. 
This is not for those who are working only. I'm talking to you students. I was surprised when a student pledged 2 million shillings this year. Na limu student service. Nangamba, wa student mukama ba imba we sent be ya mi. Vuka na alitaka pa pulanga. Kaliko 2 million. Na alitaka kwa wali 200,000 per month. Paka lezi na guwai. Eh. Namba ni baba. Baba ni sent. Tonyo mira wano ni na sent. Gwe. So because when we talk about giving, some of you are at campus, you think these things don't concern you. No, it is about the attitude we all have. That's where we start from. Right now, I want us to pledge for the December mission. And those of you that are more interested in pledging for the church expansion, I have some pledge cards that I would want you to receive. Because here, we don't know how to fake prophecies and tell you things that won't happen. What I've told you is what it is. And what we need is what we need. And all you have to do is to choose to be used of God. Actually, the first one should be the mission. If you want to prioritize. The second one, the mission. If you want to prioritize. The second one is the debt, uh, the debt relief. 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 The debt but I would wish that if you have not made a mission pledge, you make one today. And if you have not yet pledged towards us clearing the debt that we have, that you can make another pledge on that. And some of you, you may not make a pledge on that, but you can choose today to make a monthly commitment that every month I'll be supporting CTM with this much money. I don't know which conviction you have of all those things, but all of them are important. Is there anybody that would want to make a pledge towards mission? Pledging towards the mission to Kamuli so that we can do the crusades, buy the books and the sanitary pads and feed a certain community, give out those clothes, if you want to do so, just put up your hand, please. If you'd like to help us with uh, the debt relief so that we clear that 30 million, you can do it over time. You, you don't have to do it this month. As a mission, as much as possible, and probably by the end of the second week of December. Now, here's a uh, debt relief. That one, you can do it in installments. You can say, I'll play my part in this vision or in doing the work of the Lord with a million shillings, but I will do it in five months. That is possible. And if you want to make a monthly commitment, you can also raise up your hand and still you'll get that card and you can tell us every month I'll be sending you 100,000 uh, or 50,000 or 200,000. And then there are those who just say, I don't know where I want my money to go. But I would, like to, I would like to write you a check of two million and you place it where you want. Now I want to go and go and go and go and go and not specified. Yeah, the two specify go and go not specified. Chimala. And we shall do as the Lord leads. I want you to make a generous, generous pledge to the Lord. And if you are here, and you already want to make a pledge for 2023. You don't need to wait till December. You too can put up your hand. And you say, hey, I want to tell you that from January to December 2023, this is what I'm going to give to the Lord as a special offering. And the Lord will surely bless you. Others, you can choose to, to do something special. Uh, there are so many things we are working on here. 
Osoboro gamba, mwagite kukugula keyboard. I want to purchase a keyboard. Or I want to be one of the people that will purchase it. Like the church keyboard was bought like by five people. One gave a million and 70,000. Another gave 600,000. Another 150,000. So it didn't take mobilization of the whole church. Kati gosoboro kufayo no gamba, mwichambu kunjagala bakuja yupe ya microphone zinganze. Uba, njagala nkule kufisi yo musumba tujitereze. Ever since we opened the church, I've never sat in my office. Banungabaji kwa zesanga store. Ani imaji? Habana. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, you can choose to do something just as you. You can feel like me when I came into this place, I felt we need to do this. Is it okay? And God will use you. Some of you are working in different uh, professions that can help us with some things. And you know you have the expertise. Use your skill as a faithful steward unto the Lord. Tobe ira wonga bulika sero linda kufuna business from church. Some people like that, they're always waiting for business from church. Musumba, nalavyo mpangisi za generator. Nena angi na generator za mpangisa. Singa mpangisa kunze. Ah, kujangu gambe. Kusande lika generator ya angewereze mkama. Nemu nyambe mteke mwa mafuta. Tujo chikula. Nina motoka yange, bumba mgenda kumishoni ya December. Nga yeta agisi baba na yange weli. Such things. I want us to learn to be that. And if we can raise a generation of faithful stewards, you are going to see how fast the church can do great things for the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are filled in that, uh, that, that, that card, just put up your hand and they receive it. I would like to have it here. And then we shall give to the Lord and conclude today's service. In Jesus' name. That is the last thing we are going to do. But December joint service is for testimonies. Hallelujah. People have filled in their pledge cards. Clap your hands to Jesus. <laughs>